Today we sit down with Joe Shaw, a UK-based equipped and raw to an extent powerlifter who we met at World Bench Championships. Joe chats about what powerlifting means to him, how he transitioned from his other sports like rugby and what the community means to him, what lifting means to him and he gives one of the best descriptions of equipped lifting and what it's about that we've heard. Welcome to Coffee and Conversations with Champions. Go for it. So, right. And we're recording. Joe Shaw, how are you? Not bad, thank you. Not bad. Good. Isn't it always fun, like, doing the, the, the greeting again after you, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. spent, like, four minutes chatting? You always see that on, <laughs> on these YouTube channels when they're, like, walking into the shop or something like, oh, hello, how are you? It's like, we, we all know you've been there for five hours. You know? Yeah. <laughs> so, so Joe... Was- yeah, we lo- we saw you last in Sun City. Yeah, cool. And you you're currently yeah, in this well. <laughs> you know, good a hundred percent. And we we wanted to also just say thank you because we know you're currently prepping for the comp in France. Yeah, 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 yeah European bench. Yep. Are you, are you still in the UK or have you you flown out? So I'm still in the UK. I actually fly out the day before. Oh uh, wow! Um, to do equipped. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So right. it's not far. It's only like a it's a two and a half hour flight for me, I think. Okay. Um, so it's not far. Um, so I'm just going to, I'm flying the day before, stay overnight in the hotel, compete on a Sunday afternoon, All and right. then fly back about three or four hours after finishing. All right, brilliant. So sort of flight back. <laughs> All right. I, I, I saw your coach and team manager out on a bridge in, in Paris on scooters. And I was like, wow, that's a long journey on a scooter. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I don't know if Mar- I don't know if Martin's there yet, but there's a quite a few of them there. Already. The 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 guys that are there, yeah. Oh, so I think that was uh, <laughs> it was it was the troublesome bunch that were there, if you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, cool. So, Joe, tell us a little bit about yourself, and you have the single greatest Instagram handle in the history of the world ever. So <laughs> it's a bit different. Uh, there's lots. Of, yeah, there's a story about that as well. Um, but Why yeah, do you tell us I'm having a piece of toddler on? Mm-hmm. No worries. Mm. <laughs> um, I'm 24. I turn 25 next week. Uh, oh, I'm cool. from the UK. Um, I well, I was a 105 open lifter. I'm going to be moving up to the 120s over the next course of the next few years. Isn't this a um, wonderful my... sport? Yeah, it's excellent. <laughs> Plenty yeah. of toddler in. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so I'm moving up. Uh, but yeah, I'm... I do equip powerlifting mainly, and then for my day job, I'm a respiratory physiotherapist. So I work in a hospital uh, and manage patients' breathing. But yeah, it's a good job. It's a good sport. I enjoy it all. It's good. So when you give them a whack on the back to loosen some phlegm, they know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So yeah, yeah. I have to be quite gentle at times. One hundred percent. Absolutely. Yeah. As your numbers go up, they start reducing the age group that you're able yeah, to work yeah. with. So I, I remember doing um, when we were being taught at university. We mm. we do manual techniques, which is the stuff you're talking about, where you use yeah. like a cupped hand. And, yeah, yeah. Um, go around the cage and trying to move secretions and move phlegm for certain different patient groups. Um, I would always be doing it, and I'd always get told off by our lecturers for being too gentle. <laughs> really? I spent the whole time petrified that I was going to hurt someone or like, yeah. cause any damage or something, <laughs> because that's what you worry about as a heavyweight yeah. powerlifter. Really. Yeah, hundred percent. You don't want to break a rib, you know. You, you hug people yeah. and you tend to crack ribs. Absolutely. Okay, so come on, t- tell us about the the Instagram handle. I mean, I saw cake, so, and that was it was brilliant. Yeah. <laughs> so. My, I used to play before powerlifting. So mm. before getting into powerlifting, I played a lot of rugby, mm-hmm. um, and played out with my local team. I ended up, I, I don't remember originally how the nickname came, but I think it was something to do with the fact that I played in the front row. I was always a bigger person. I've always been a bit fat, so I ended up getting the nickname of C- Cake or Captain Cake, mm-hmm. and that's what it always was. Um, and my, I was cake one, my brother was cake two, like there's all this different stuff. Um, 
and it made sense then to me. So we, that it was when Instagram was quite new, and we, everyone was starting Instagrams, and I started an Instagram right. for just my lifting because I got a, a squat rack at home. I put it in my parents' like living room. Mm-hmm. I was doing squats at home, and I wanted to post it online to show my schoolmates what I was doing, and I, right. it just automatically became that I would become the cake lifter because I was I was captain cake at rugby, so I was going to become <laughs> cake lifter. Um, yeah, yeah, <laughs> it's a bit different. And then since then, I I haven't changed anything about that, so it's just always stayed the same. So I mean, I've had that Instagram for well since I had my home gym, so like since twenty sixteen. Okay, so it's just been the same thing since then, and I've just never changed it. And that's my Instagram I've always used. So brilliant. Uh, um, the... It's just been a thing that's just just <laughs> carried on, and then yeah, it's been and, good. And you, and you know what's better is that you're in the one of the fives. I mean, if you were a cake yeah. lifter in the sixty sixes, be yeah, a bit... it's just. Con- <laughs> Yeah. You mean... like, I, I find it funny when you see like the yep. um the really lightweight women and they have like something thick in their name and you're like but you're yeah. tiny like there's nothing <laughs> on you this doesn't make any sense to me yeah Loret- loretta thick thighs and it's like you weigh 43 kilos lady yeah, yeah <laughs> doesn't make sense <laughs> and you had to drink three liters of water just to make your weight <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah oh bro how, how did you come to powerlifting so like yeah like i said so i played a lot of rugby like growing Mm. up um and always like we're doing lots of training for that and always told you need to get bigger you need to get stronger so always what was trying to go to the gym and i remember going to the school gym when that first got started at school um so i'm turning that off yeah yeah don't worry Um, and then i went to university um to study physio um didn't like the look of the rugby team there okay um they had been banned for doing various dodgy things at uni uh, a couple of years before, and they didn't seem like a nice group. And then mm-hmm. I, I don't know, as, as a rugby team, you want to like get on with everyone you're playing with and not feel like you, you want to be part of the group. And I didn't feel like I would be. I played a bit of lacrosse at uni for mm-hmm. like maybe the first couple of months because I wanted to play team sport. It's always been in like our family. We always, everyone has to play a sport. Everyone has something. Everyone does something. You can't not do anything physical. That's part of like how we were brought up as kids. Um, mm. so I'd heard about powerlifting, <coughs> done a bit of like powerlift, seen a bit of powerlifting on YouTube, et cetera, et cetera, decided I wanted to do that. So I just signed up for a meet through like a university championship thing. Um, my first meet was at 93 okay. and then I went down, I was an 83 at one point, which just doesn't really make sense to me anymore. Um, and then since then got into like single ply, loved that, probably won't go back. <laughs> you won't okay you won't go back yeah. to classic no no i just don't i don't know this is a, there's a feeling you get when you like either like especially with a squat or with a bench where you like mm. walk out of squat classic and it feels heavy but you know that you're probably going to get it mm-hmm. and there's no like change to your blood pressure the, the room there's no change to your vision it doesn't mm. feel like a ton on your back whereas you walk out a single ply spot uh, a single ply squat you've been like shot out of a cannon to get there I remember my first single ply meet. My I had a coach. He took me there. They. I remember having one knee wrap on when they like called my name. They were like, "Oh, you're up." I was like, "Oh God, here we go." He wrapped my knee in like Mm. twenty seconds. I ran out. I felt like I've been shot out of a cannon. I've never felt like that before, and I've never had that much adrenaline for a lift. And I can't replicate that classic now. So like, do all my training to get stronger, but Mm. going for a max like classic squats it's like we'll probably get this if it goes a bit wrong i'll probably push through it if i walk out my max single plus squat i'll either get it or i die yeah i quite yeah. like that polarity of it 100%. and i also quite like lifting a lot more weight i always mm-hmm. i was always told that powerlifting is about lifting a lot of weight um and who can be the strongest and who can lift the most weight and the the, the single ply numbers my single ply numbers aren't bigger than classic guys a lot of the classic mm-hmm. people are very strong but i aim to achieve more than that and i'd I'd want to lift as much as my my body can handle right and and you know that's the thing with taking that that weight off uh equipped it's it's, you're feeling every single gram you know (laughs) there's no help with this from the suit at the top uh of of either of the movements really and i think with with bench with bench what's so incredible and it was uh, amazing being tc for so many of your guys lifts just to see 
you know, firstly, the the fact that your coach, uh, the heart rate was about eight, 900 beats per minute, but just like yeah. how they were watching you and watching that groove because you really, you've got to take it down a razor wire to the right point on the chest. Otherwise, it's not coming up. And it's all going wrong, you, yeah. You, know, you may even have that, the, it kicking back on you and crazy. It's unbelievable. I find, I find equipment a lot more exciting to watch. I think... Mm-hmm. If you like, I watched Classic Worlds recently and it was amazing and there was some incredible lifting. Mm. But apart from a few classes, most of them you know who's going to win before you start. Or you can yeah. at least draw the top three people out. Mm-hmm. Um, if you look at some of the equip results and what happens, because of bombs, because of like the, the, the shirt and the technical adjustments you can make, yeah. you can have incredible performances just come out of nowhere. Mm-hmm. So like one of the things that's pushed me to go up and one of the things I get really inspired by was watching the super heavyweight men at Worlds mm. in South Africa um, yeah. for the equipped guys. Right. So I'd watch the classic supers and the classic super, the the, 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 um, the top guy bench 260, he opened mm-hmm. heavier than everyone else and was always going to win. Um, with the super heavyweights in South Africa, I think the, the crazy one was watching a Mongolian guy go out twice, miss Bomb. his opener out second at the same yep they looked terrible they were terrible lifts they just it didn't look like he was going to go anywhere i think he jumped 15 to mm. go into first place before yep. shane overtook him for gold but yep. like it was just, he just came out absolutely smoked it and we were sat in front of the mongolians right and they were absolutely it was just incredible to see yeah and yeah. like that kind of appeal of a quick bench and especially the heavier you get the, the numbers become a bit more exaggerated in terms of what you can jump what you can do mm-hmm. it's just crazy um as it's, opposed to you open classic you know you've got a 15 kilo window max that's yeah. it you don't have to change something and, and fix your entire technique or, or strength from there and one of the best description I've, I've heard of equipped uh and 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 what you love about it, that's phenomenal i mean that was really a great you, you yeah great description so we're going to be tagging this for people who want to know the difference between the two. Miguel and a, hate lifters. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, classic, you've always got the opportunity to to do both. And I think if we go yeah. back and look at powerlifting originally, it was all, it just all moved into equipped. And then, yeah. you know, yeah. it, it, classic came about as a, you know, classic's relatively young. But if, if you talk about essays, uh, I mean, worlds in South Africa, I, I was standing there. I was TC for that session, and just oh, like shell going up to an eye, up it, you know, like they were screaming yeah, and they're running, and the, it was like it was unbelievable. And I, the Mongolian getting his third attempt. So it's like I don't know if that was all part of a ploy, um, you know, but it was a sure. big risk to take. Yeah, <laughs> you can't. With I was equipment. watching the um, the one hundred five guys was mad. Like the, my session, I didn't actually really pay attention to what was going on because it was mm. more focused on trying to get a lift and not die. Yeah, um, and I wasn't anywhere <laughs> near where like the top guys were. Um, I had a vague idea of where like my countrymen and that were, but like that was about it. And I remember watching the session back and working out what happened in terms of how the Mongolian had won our session. Mm. And he'd opened missed because I remember watching that because I was second out. So you end up watching the, the later guys yeah. through the tunnel. Um, he opened and missed. He got it on his second, but he was therefore second behind the Japanese guy. Mm. And he jumped 22 and a half just to put yeah. it out of reach. And yeah. he made it and he won the world. It was like, Watching it back was ridiculous. Yeah. Um, uh, very, yeah. Very, very cool. So you mentioned that sort of in your household, you had to do a sport. Can you, yeah. can you tell us a little bit more about that sort of? Uh, we didn't that, have that to. Mm, okay. <laughs> it wasn't like a forced thing. But I remember like we grew up playing football and mm. playing sports at school. Uh, so I was quite lucky to go to a decent school, like as, at primary school, secondary school. And they had a lot of sport programs you could do like i went to south i actually went to south africa 2013 on a rugby okay. tour from okay. my school secondary school so and we went do? to sun city we yeah. did all right we won four out of six games we got absolutely annihilated by the sax school oh, okay yeah you know, cape, cape, town? Town in cape, town. cape town yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. they have some absolute monsters who, who um, did you play who did you play in, I mean, did you play a couple of other schools in cape town or I think we just played sax down Thanks, there. Okay. We played the town. We played a township side in Cape Town. Okay, fantastic. I, I remember that distinctively. Yeah. Um, and then I think we played a couple of teams in Joburg and one in right. Pretoria. Okay. Uh, yeah. 
it was a good tour. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, <laughs> did you throw any beds out of hotel windows? <laughs> no. <laughs> Which is why my school stopped rugby tours when when I was really? in standard six. Yeah, standard six, standard six or standard nine. So I, I think when I was in standard six, Camps Bay High had the most incredible rugby team, and yeah. um, we sent a team on tour to South America. It was all of, by the time I got to matric with a bunch of reprobates that I was in school with. I think they scored one try the entire season. But they're famous for throwing a, a bed out of the window, I think in Oatswin at the Holiday Inn, into the swimming pool. There was, uh, it, I stand to be corrected, but if memory serves correctly, yeah. yeah. What goes on tour stays on tour. What goes on tour stays, or stays in the pool, unless you go and fetch it. Yeah. But yeah. <laughs> so you, you talk about sort of, um, you know, sport with a family and always being sporty. How, how important, and it, it, it's a, this is one of the messages we want to get across, how important was that to you and sort of your development as a person, your physical health, your mental health? Because I think there are a lot yeah. of kids, you know, lifting cake and pies uh, and not getting off the couch and sitting on a, you know, on a, on a PlayStation. Not to say that yeah. you can't earn a good living doing that, but in reality... <laughs> Uh, for most people, you know, you go to the gym and you train a session, you finish yeah. that session after two hours, you're better than when you started. Two hours yeah. of a computer game, a video game, you're not usually that much better than when you started in, in total. So how valuable yeah. has it been to you? Very. Um, so like I said, I grew up sort of, we played football and then mm -hmm. I, I didn't enjoy football as much and I was always a bigger kid. So you would get pushed towards rugby, played mm -hmm. a bit of rugby. Rugby was really important in terms of like developing social skills, making friends, um, the camaraderie and the, the culture of rugby mm -hmm. is really important. And it's it's harped on about all the time. And that if you ask anyone about rugby, that's all they talk about, how the gentleman's sport and all this stuff. But it was really important in sort of growing up and doing a physical sport, doing a an aggressive sport and learning how to mm -hmm. do that and be appropriate mm -hmm. and, and be a good person within that respecting the referee is a huge thing in rugby and sort of bringing that through to how you operate and how you are as a person in like everyday life is quite important to me i think also it my, my dad is really really into the fact that we should play team sports and so he was always a bit hesitant about powerlifting until he sort of took a bit of time to appreciate what especially equipped is in terms of having a team and having a big group of people around you because right. it was always him it's all about having a team having team skills being able to work as part of a team being able to be a leader being able yes. to be a follower etc etc and those skills right. and that's what's taught to you in rugby and team mm -hmm. sport and football to a lesser degree etc etc so that was really important to me um when i got to uni and i realized i didn't want to play rugby <laughs> i didn't want to do um lacrosse and other sports that i sort of tried mm -hmm. and trying to find like a sport to play because that was what you did uh, and that's to me is what i do like you, you you train three or four times a week for whatever you want to do and you have to do something yeah um, but like when i didn't even find that it was like oh i need to do something so i'll go to the gym and i'll do powerlifting and i've heard about that before so i pick mm -hmm. competition train for it do it um it's a massive like outlet for me so like i had some difficulties at uni i have some difficulties in terms of i've got a really high stress job yeah um I work in some difficult situations. Uh, so having like an outlet to sort of express yourself, be yourself, feel mm -hmm. yourself, feel confident. Um, it all sort of exaggerates. Mm -hmm. um, I listened to like, there was a, a, he's not a great example of character, but there was a guy called George Lehman who used to be on mm -hmm. YouTube and used to talk about bit like, like you mentioned about video games, powerlifting and training and building yourself towards competition is almost to me like a video game. Mm -hmm. You just you work on different aspects of your performance, your character, and, levels, yeah. and build yourself up. And it's it's almost like leveling your character up over time. Um, and it's really obvious to see that. And as quite an objective mm -hmm. person and someone that likes ticking boxes and going up right. through the the rankings, etc., it's quite easy to do that with a really objective sport like powerlifting. Mm -hmm. With rugby, you find that even if you, your game got 10 times better, if everyone else has got worse or stayed the same, you still get absolutely battered. Yeah. Um, and you'd be stood there going, we've lost 50 nil again, but I did everything I just should have done right. Um, yes, yes. Whereas yes. With more individual sport, if you're like, oh, if I did everything right, then I get better. Mm. And it's quite easy to see that. The more you put in, the more you get out. Right. Um, 
Yeah. I think, you know, with, with that though, uh, you know, the, the team effort is also there. And I mean, particularly obviously with, you know, you could always tell your dad, dad, I love equipped five guys. Help me get dressed. Uh, yeah, yeah. You know, which is, <laughs> which is sort of kind of fun. But I mean, with your team, with, with the British team, when I saw you guys yes. in South Africa, I mean, it was the most incredible group. I mean, the, like you guys, the Japanese, the Mongolians, but, and then all of you guys together as well. But it was like really wonderful. What does the community mean to you? What what makes it special for you? I mean, we can talk about the British team and then the yeah, powerlifting yeah. in general. So like, um, I think the British team in South Africa was quite special. Mm -hmm. um, and I I'm not someone who's been part of British teams before, so I probably can't I can't comment on what it was like before or what like the culture was before. But like to me, it was really nice right. to go to my first World Championships with a team of people that all wanted you to do well yeah <laughs> whether you're in the same weight class whether you're in this you're competing for spots etc etc everyone wanted everyone to do well everyone supported everyone people were helping coaching people were helping supporting we there was people supporting every single session we had even if it wasn't in the back um yes. sorting people's shirts out doing people's numbers we'd have people every single time out the front mm -hmm. um cheering you on making you you feel valued and, and that was a really big team spirit sort of thing we did a lot of social stuff taking we about 20 together. chairs in the front row with the union jack yeah 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 <laughs> gotta get the union jack up <laughs> <laughs> but yeah right. and like yeah. singing like singing the anthem together supporting mm. everyone like yeah it was good fun um it was really special it was a special team mm. um and hopefully we'll have we'll have similar at this europeans i think Awesome. How, how are you finding the powerlifting community uh, in general if you compare it to some of the other sports that you've been involved in? It, it's good. I think it's mm -hmm. different and I think there's different parts of it. So as a whole, I think the whole community is a positive thing. Obviously, yes. powerlifting is supportive. I think there's different areas of it that aren't. Um, and I think it gets quite clicky at times. Um, yeah. And I find it difficult at times, I'd say. Mm -hmm. But in general, it's good. And the little bits I'm part of have all been pretty good as a rule. Right. Um, but sort of, I think that's taking time. And I think it's in the UK, especially, the culture is massively changing mm -hmm. and will change over time. We, we're having better and better lifters. We're having better and better teams. We're having more and more lifters and more younger lifters coming through. Right. And I think in general, our retention rate is getting better. I'd say, but as that develops, I think the culture will change. Awesome. Uh, it's, yeah. I mean, yeah. I, I really, I mean, there was a big team camaraderie um, with you guys. And as you know, in terms of seeing it as a team, not a group of individuals that are all hanging, yeah. you know, yeah. hanging out together. So if you're going to chat to someone and, and, and let's say, for example, at varsity, right? What, how, yeah. Why should they get involved in powerlifting? Why, why should they come into the sport? Supportive. <laughs> You'll get stronger. Mm -hmm. It builds you up mentally and physically. Um, it's social. Yeah. Um, I think tra I think training for training's sake, in terms of like general recreational training, in terms of going to a gym, trying to get fitter, trying to get stronger, that's great. And I would always support people to do that, especially mm -hmm. as a physio. But yep, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I think enough. powerlifting yeah. adds the team part to it at times and I think if you have a good powerlifting team and you have people that do powerlifting around you it helps to lift you up it's the same with yes. all the other strengths if you, have, if you train with yeah. strong men you get stronger if you train with powerlifters you get stronger if you train with bodybuilders you learn different things Yes, it's like it, it adds to the community of it and I think general I've definitely learned that there's more of that in general like gym recreation than I thought there was. I've always been quite lucky to always push myself towards training in a proper powerlifting gym and training with strength athletes all the time. Right. I've started training a bodybuilding, I would describe it as a meathead gym recently. And the people that come out Excellent. of that are really are actually a lot at times they're a lot more supportive than powerlifters can be. Sure. Because they okay. don't understand anything that's going on, but they're just like, You're here, you're lifting weights, we'll have yeah. a good time, we'll look to each other. And yeah. that sort of community is why I do powerlifting. That's what I like. I, I'm never going to be the best in the world, but mm. I can be better than I have been. And the, the journey of trying to be better and get there is, is what's most important to me, I think. Right, 100%. You know, the, but you say that, but if you stick it out till your 80s, 
yeah. you may well have an opportunity. But, you know, it's we were in Hong Kong recently and the, the main tournament organizer, Mr. Pock, he's in his 80s and he's still yeah. competing equipped. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I it, went to um, New yeah. Zealand last yeah. year. Okay. Um, for the Commonwealth. Yeah. Uh, like for England, and we went, and there was mass. There was Mick Ellender from our England there, and he's an M4. I don't exactly yeah. know how old he is. Yeah. Um, and watching him compete equipped was amazing. It's the same as like watching someone like Dan McGauley like this. Yeah. Like it's they're just absolutely. incredibly like inspirational people, and the, watching them do it equipped was amazing. I think yeah. Mick went like 120, 120, 120 on his total as well. Right, it was oh. absolutely brilliant. But I mean, it's phenomenal, right? I mean, it, that's what I love about the sport is you can really carry on with it so long. So, did, did yeah. you meet any of the South Africans at uh, in New Zealand? And Matt, uh, oh, in New Zealand, not in New Zealand. Okay, we had one um, of our uh, one of our guys, Simon Bretsky. Uh, who's been? Uh, he won um, his division, doing career, but also he went to the school in the, he went to school in the UK, and then to oh, nice. uh, Hilton down in Natal. Right, so he's also a very good rugby player. Then he played against Bobby Skinstat. Uh, Skinstat was a few years younger than him. Uh, one of our yeah. former Springboks. So yeah, I mean, th there's a great correlation between rugby and and powerlifting. I think yeah. I think a lot of the guys also realize that for longevity, powerlifting may be safer if they're not in with a chance on the safe. national team. So for sure. So like, what what does the future hold for you, Joe? Uh, so I have Europeans next week. Mm -hmm. um, hopefully, do that. My big thing that I really want to get to next year is to get to Texas for Bench Worlds. Yeah, I think that will be a huge meet, and I think where it is and who's who'll be going, etc. I think there'll be a lot of really good lifters there. Yeah, um, absolutely. One of my motivations to move up and try and get a spot as a 120. Okay. Um, but we'll see. We needed some big lifts to get it done before then. Oh, you can do it. You can do it. <laughs> There's time. And I think, yeah, how has being a physio helped you or, or has it hindered you a little bit in terms of. Lots of what we learn as physios directly contradicts what I think and try and be as a power lifter. I mean, it, um, it particularly I mean, I, I, with, with equipped, eh? Like, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it doesn't make sense. People are like, what are you doing? But like, um, I'm lucky with physio; it's quite mm. separate. And I, one of the reasons I went into respiratory and like um, mm. that sort of aspect and that sort of field of physio is it is very separate to what like most people think of physio as. Most people think yeah. of physio as injuries and training mm. and performance and stuff like that. And that's what a large majority of physio is worldwide. Mm. But we have respiratory physio here, and it's very, yeah. very different. And it's a nice break for me at times mm. um but i do get to use my skills sometimes yeah. that's good <laughs> do you have it's always funny when the patient goes do you yeah. are you gonna are you gonna drop me on the floor or oh, i don't feel very safe and i was like i'm not gonna drop you mate <laughs> don't worry you know what you, you you do need to find a mate who's gonna you're gonna be treating you gotta start putting your knee wraps on before you <laughs> see him <laughs> <laughs> Oh, fantastic, man. And I think just uh, really sort of from your side, is there anything really that you'd like to add before we finish? No, not massively. Okay. Um, yeah, quite happy. Right. I, I must tell you, it's been absolutely, absolutely fantastic chatting to you. I was looking forward to this as well. Um, you know, you, you bring, you, you really, you bring a wonderful energy uh, to, to the podcast. And also, you know, that's what I remember from Sun City. And, um, you know, I remember also seeing your face when Dan was lifting and yeah, how, yeah. how encouraging and gentle you were with him. But, you know, still like you were there and then when he was going out the other way, you know, they'd come. <laughs> it was, it was wonderful. I really, I really enjoyed it. And I like yeah. the big, my favorite, one of the best memories of South Africa is one, watching him lift and two, yeah. just helping coaching and being, taking more of a coaching role. Yeah. We had, like, cause the way our team has worked, we've had quite a lot of people that are quite new to equipment coming mm -hmm. in. So like Dan himself hasn't done equipment for very long, but it's been yeah. like a new learning process. And we've had lots of the better classic lifters come over and have a go. Right. Um, and, be and being in a weird position for me, because I'm not old, I've not been doing this for ages, but I've got a decent amount of experience in a shirt and I get a decent yeah. amount of carryover. Mm. Um, but being in a position where you can help others and, and coach and show different things and I know how to play the numbers game on the scorecard, so that was yes. fun. And like, it's, it, I really enjoyed like the the 
extra stuff with my lifting and the lifting almost took a second thing right um, but it was yeah it was very cool to go out and lift yeah it was it was very very special to see as well i mean it was awesome man. Um, and i'm i'm and i'm looking forward to to seeing you in texas so yeah man it was been good I'm going to have to make that happen. Uh, awesome. But Joe, listen, we want to wish you uh, lightweights, white lights, <laughs> the perfect shirt setup. All right. <laughs> knee, knee wraps that work but don't kill you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. When the baby toes black, you can start to worry. Uh, <laughs> you know? I've got one of them at the moment. <laughs> uh, oh, geez. Yeah, fair enough. And then uh, what else? Like deadlift suits that allow you to get down but up quickly as well. So, I don't yeah. fit in. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so listen, you're only good things for the comp. Will we're gonna definitely Thanks. gonna try and watch you. What time are you lifting for those who are watching? Oh, good question. I'm mm. gonna have to go off this because I no, never know. All right. Well, tell, all right. Uh, cool. If you can tell me now, that I will be lifting, lifting at probably about half two on Sunday in France. Okay. Half two France time. All right. Good. Awesome. And uh, I, I need you to bully Kugels, please. Because he's he he's been Craig's been bunking coming onto this podcast, so uh, you put a bit of pressure on him. <laughs> have a chat. Take him I to a quiet person. corner. Yeah, smack him around a bit. <laughs> not not with his <laughs> misses around. Okay. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> you get in trouble, mate. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Oh, man, Joe, thank you so much. Really appreciate it. Thanks and, for having uh, me, mate. I appreciate it. Only a player, we, and we look forward to we'd love to do this again to chat to you, you know, maybe after after the comp just to catch up. It was great. All right, cheers, man. Cracker. All right, man. Take care. Cheers. See you later. Bye.